the most part, Disney is viewed as the most magical place on Earth. But even so, that doesn't mean there aren't a few dark secrets or even dark locations they'd rather you didn't get too close to. Welcome back friends, I am Kennedy and today we are talking about the most terrifying Disney parks and attractions you should never mess around with. So grab your Mickey ears and get ready cause this is the top 10 prohibited Disney parks that you have been warned not to visit. Starting us off at number 10 is Lake Buena Vista Airport. If there is one thing that Disney does best, it's branding their empire. And once upon a time, an airport, of all things, was a part of the Disney dynasty. You see, when Walt was first trying to create Epcot, the community, not the theme park, he wanted a regional airport with four runways. This vision did not quite come to fruition, but what we did get was the 1971 Buena Vista Airport. This boutique airport, if you will, was only used by two airlines and was meant for Disney guests and employees, and the biggest feature it became known for was that when you wish upon a star played after landing thanks to small grooves in the runway. However, cute factor aside, despite Walt's grand plans, the dream began to die in the 1980s with the construction of the monorail. The airport, now surrounded on either side, became dangerous to use, and so eventually no more flights were allowed in or out. Nowadays, the abandoned airport is mostly used for storage and parking rather than an attraction for the public, but it's said that Walt's abandoned plane is hidden somewhere on the lot. And who knows, maybe his ghost is still in there. Next up at number 9, the Wonders of Life Pavilion. I don't know about you, but when I think about Disney, I don't usually jump to health education. Well, as it turns out, the plan for the original Epcot included a pavilion that was to be dedicated to life and health, which eventually made its debut in 1989. The main attraction of this pavilion was called Body Wars, which was a ride that aimed to simulate what it felt like to travel through the human bloodstream, which had I had the chance, I would for sure have wanted to get on to live out my magic school bus dreams. However, despite running for nearly 18 years, the Wonders of Life Pavilion closed without any explanation in January 2007. At the time of its closure, there were of course tons of rumors, however the true reason has never been verified. It was just boarded up and closed off. which is definitely a bit suspicious, but could there be something they are hiding from the public that's locked away? I guess we'll never know. Next up at number 8, Pirates of the Caribbean. As the legend goes, during the construction for the Florida version of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, a welder named George was killed in an accident. Now, the exact accident that happened to George does vary depending on who you ask. Some say he was crushed by a falling beam, while others say that he fell from the burning city portion of the ride and died as a result. But no matter how he died, everyone can agree on one thing, that he remains haunting the ride and terrorizing anyone who dares disrespect him. It said George will stop the ride if he hears you say that you don't believe he's real. And superstitious cast members will greet George when they arrive and say goodbye when they leave to try and stay on his good side. So with that being said, while it's not technically prohibited, it's not exactly somewhere you want to mess with. So if you do decide to take your chances, make sure you don't piss off George. You never know what might happen. Next up at number 7, Haunted Mansion. This next one is a story from a visitor at Disney World in Florida while riding the Haunted Mansion who claims they witnessed a ghost and allegedly have the photo to prove it. Quote, as you'll see in the photo, it appears as though a young boy is peeking his head out of the doom buggy and looking directly at me. Not only was he not there when I took the pic, there wasn't a boy of this age within 20 people in front of me in line. And as you can see, he's only a few doom buggies in front of me. Not only that, 
what's he doing looking at me? There is no flash and no visible light coming from me. It's all infrared and invisible to the naked eye. So could it be that the haunted mansion is in fact haunted by real ghosts? Just tread carefully if you try to find out for yourself. You never know what they could want from you. Next up at number six, Walt's apartment. Depending on how much of a Disney fan you are, you may or may not be familiar with a certain apartment that's located above the firehouse on Main Street at Disneyland. The reason for this apartment was initially nothing terribly exciting, but simply because Mr. Disney himself wanted a place to stay that was on the property to make those late nights and early mornings a little easier. Now, to be fair, Walt's apartment isn't really prohibited anymore. You can go see it if you like, but the question is, should you? Well, nowadays a light is always left on in the front window. According to the legend, this wasn't always the case. It's said that one day a cast member looking after the apartment tried to turn the light off before leaving. However, after leaving the building, she looked up only to notice that the light was still on upstairs. Confused, but assuming she must have forgotten, she went back up to turn it off and came back downstairs. But once again, it was on. So she went up again, unplugged the lamp, only to find it once again still somehow back on by the time she came downstairs. The final time she went up, she heard an angry voice saying, quote, I'm still here. And she was so frightened, she ran away and never returned back to work. Who could that voice have belonged to? No one knows for sure, but the light remains on so as to never anger it again. Coming in at number five, Dolly's Dip. In 1984, Regina Young, or Dolly, as she liked to go by, was tragically killed while riding the Matterhorn. It seems there was a malfunction in Dolly's seatbelt, resulting in her falling out of the bobsled and being struck by an oncoming sled. The family eventually settled with the park, and the park simultaneously changed the kinds of seatbelts used for that attraction. However, the park says that the two events are unrelated. Now, of course, the Matterhorn remains a public ride, so you're free to take your chances on it, but be warned, it's said that the ghost of Dolly haunts the ride, specifically at the location she was killed. Referred to as Dolly's Dip, visitors and employees alike say they have been haunted by her presence while inside. Some say they can feel her watching them, while others claim to have seen a full-bodied apparition. But unless you're looking for a little paranormal action on your next Disney trip, then I would suggest lining up for a different ride. Coming in at number four, Nara Dreamland. Located in Japan, Nara Dreamland opened its doors to the public back in 1961. Now, from the get-go, the plan for this park was to be a part of the Disney franchise. In fact, Kunizo Matsuo, president of the Matsuo Entertainment Company, apparently met with Walt Disney to discuss the attraction with the plan of it being being an official Disney park in mind. However, allegedly, after disagreements over the licensing fees for using the Disney characters, there was a huge falling out and Nara Dreamland was officially not an affiliated park. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, what the hell is this doing on a Disney list? Well, despite its lack of official Disney representation, it sure resembles a Disney park if I've ever seen one. Or rather, it did prior to its 2006 closure. Attractions like a large Matterhorn mountain, castle, and even a monorail found, and for many years it remained a ghost town, overgrown with nature and filled with an eerie presence. This of course caught the attention of Disney and horror fans alike for a while, but you had to be incredibly careful, as it was said visitors could be fined and arrested for trespassing into the abandoned property. However, as of 2017, the former theme park was demolished. But make no mistake, it's still not somewhere you should go poking around. While it was abandoned, some that snuck in complained of feeling like they were being watched or haunted by an angry entity, and it's believed that those same ghosts still haunt the grounds where it used to stand. Coming in at number three, Nighttime Trespassers. In 1966, 19 year old Thomas Guy Cleveland tried to sneak into Anaheim's Disneyland by scaling the park's outer fence and climbing along the monorail track. 
track. Now, why he was trying to sneak in after hours, we don't really know. But nonetheless, his devious plan all came to a halt when a nearby security guard noticed him. At first, he approached to get him to leave, but then he noticed a monorail was making its way along the tracks, and so he began yelling at Cleveland to get out of the way. At this point, Cleveland jumped and landed on a fiberglass canopy beneath the track to try and clear it. But unfortunately, the canopy did not keep him safe. From there, the 25 kilometer an hour monorail struck Cleveland and dragged his body for 40 feet down the track. By the time the monorail had made a complete stop, his body had been torn to pieces. So whatever you do, for the love of God, don't try to scale the wall and sneak in at night. It might be the last night you ever have. Coming in at number two, Discovery Island. Originally called Treasure Island, after the 1950 film of the same name, this Disney park opened to the public in 1974 as a premier tourist destination for Disney fans of all ages. Accessible only by resort boat or Disney cruise lines, the original park revolved around the theme of shipwrecks, secret caves, and buried treasure. However, in April 1976, Disney decided to rebrand to the new Discovery Discovery Island. This rebranding waved goodbye to pirate boats and treasure and instead welcomed rich flora and fauna hoping to invite a more relaxing atmosphere all while simultaneously showcasing and protecting Florida's local wildlife. Which to be fair, it did for a while. Discovery Island was accredited by the Association of Zoological Parks and Aquariums and at its peak housed over 500 endangered species. However, much to the public's surprise, Discovery Island Island was abandoned in 1999. The animals were relocated to a new park, Animal Kingdom, and the island park has remained a ghost town ever since. Now, while it's sort of unclear as to why it shut down, some reasons include wild roaming alligators, along with deadly bacteria found in the park's waters. And while all of that might sound intriguing, I promise you, you do not want to try and visit this one. Walt Disney World has banned all outings to the park. In fact, you're not allowed to get within 50 feet of its shoreline, and legal action can be taken if you're found trespassing. And that's not just a threat, people have actually been banned from all Disney parks for life for attempting to visit. So yeah, if I were you, I would steer clear of this one. And last up in our number one spot, River Country. After opening as the first water park at the Walt Disney World Resort in 1976, River Country was a popular destination for many years. And out of all of the places on this list, this one definitely has the wildest backstory. Controversy around the water park started to bubble up back in 1980, when a boy tragically died there due to an amoeba that was found in the water. The amoeba in question managed to kill him by attacking his brain and nervous system. However, Disney was absolved of the blame due to the fact that that specific amoeba could have bred in any fresh water. But the story's not done yet. Fast forward two years to 1982, and another boy died at River Country, this time from drowning on the Whoopenhaller slide. This time, Disney was sued by the family of the boy who claimed that there was no proper warning about how deep the water was. And a lifeguard testified, admitting that they had to routinely save dozens of people from that slide on a daily basis. Even so, the park remained open. Then in 1989, another boy drowned there. However, it wasn't until the events in September of 2001 went down that Disney was forced to close the park due to the nationwide tourism cut. From that day forward, the doors have remained shut and the park has been closed off to the public. Though some believe that those who have lost their lives still roam around haunting the grounds. Well, there you have it friends. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you next time. Catch you next time. Dope.